Hey everyone, I'm the small engine mechanic, and today, we'll be working on this edger. The engine is made by Tecumseh and is normally very dependable. However, this engine has been sitting for a while with old fuel in it. Trying to start it with a full choke isn't showing any signs of starting. A little trick is to remove the air filter, spray, a small amount of brake cleaner into the throat of the carburetor, and give it a test pull. The engine starts this way, but as soon as you try to open the choke, the engine shuts down. So, we know the issue is with the fuel system. Let's get started. First, we'll use a quarter inch socket to remove the air filter housing mount and inspect the gasket. Then, we'll remove the four screws holding the fuel tank to the mounting plate. Using a pair of vice grips, we'll pinch off the fuel supply hose and remove the clamp from the carburetor. The fuel tank and fuel line can now be disconnected from the carburetor and set aside. To make the removal process easier, we'll be removing the two bolts that hold the intake pipe to the head. Make a mental note or take a photo of where the throttle linkage is attached. Now, the carburetor can be removed from the engine and disconnected from the governor's arm. The throttle linkage can also be removed from the carburetor and set aside. To remove the bowl of the carburetor, we'll need to remove the high-speed carburetor bowl nut. A small container to catch the fuel is helpful, plus it can give you a visual indication of the fuel quality. Once the nut is removed, a simple twist of the bowl will release it from the body of the carburetor. The fuel in the carburetor does not look new or fresh, there is a sandy type of debris at the bottom of the bowl. Now, we'll remove the float hinge pin, float, and needle. Then, we'll remove the carburetor from the intake pipe.
Next, we can remove the idle screw, spring, washer, and O-ring. Make sure the O-ring and washer come out of the carburetor. Now that the fuel has had time to settle and separate, you can see the water that sinks to the bottom of the fuel. That alone could keep the engine from running. We can remove the high-speed carburetor adjustment needle, spring, and O-ring. Now, the carburetor and its parts are ready to be cleaned with the ultrasonic cleaner. Now that all the parts have been cleaned and dried off, We'll start the reassembly process. We'll start with the carburetor float and install the needle and hinge pin into the body of the carburetor. Now, we'll install the carburetor bowl O-ring. Once the O-ring is in place, we can install the carburetor bowl, making sure the dimple is opposite the hinge pin. Then, we can install the high-speed carburetor bowl nut and washer. Make sure not to over-tighten this nut. Next, we can install the high-speed needle valve, ensuring the tip is clean. Be sure to install the flat washer and O-ring before installing the needle in the carburetor. Once the needle seats, you can back it out one and a half turns.
Now, we can install the idle screw needle. We'll inspect the intake manifold gaskets, and, if in good condition, reinstall it on the carburetor. Now, we can reinstall the assembly onto the engine, reconnect the throttle linkage, and attach the other end to the governor's arm. Then, we'll install the intake manifold to the head bolts. Now, we can reconnect the fuel line to the carburetor, install the clamp, and then the fuel tank retaining screws. Do not over tighten the screws. Finally, we'll reinstall the air filter base. Now, we'll give it a test run.
If the engine doesn't start, you can adjust the high idle screw on the bottom of the carburetor. After a couple of adjustments, it's running well, and the blade is spinning. That means another one is good to go.